and they're being told this mandate's coming up, but it's really hard to do that. It's really hard because cloud is diverse. You, know, you are running multiple services, multiple ways of accessing data, the multiple control points, and companies really struggle to meet those mandates. Welcome to Uptech Report. This is our Apply Tech series. Uptech Report is sponsored by TerraLeap. Learn how to leverage the power of video at terraleap.io. I'm excited today to be joined by my guest, Balaji Gannison, who's based in Fremont, California. He's the co-founder and CEO at Privacera. Welcome, Balaji. Good to have you on. Thank you so much for having me and appreciate the opportunity. Now, Privacera, you guys are focused on the enterprise space in data security and governance platform. Um, actually, on um, last time we chatted, I, I like you said you're helping them access and share data responsibly. I think that's what you said. Help me understand what's the problem that you see in the space very briefly. What is that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's a brief set of problems. There are three trends that we are intersecting. One, most companies are becoming data driven. So the use of data is pervasive um, to run analytics, to understand customers, to understand supply chain. Um, two there is a, a shift to cloud, a public cloud, which is giving rise to a modern data architecture where there are multiple services available to access the data. It's making it easier to go and access the data. We like easy. E everyone loves easy. Everyone loves easy. Data, you it's can data, data for everyone. It, it's, it's available and it's truly yeah. make, going towards data democratization. But on, on the other hand, you know, data governance, which is essentially guardrails around data, security, privacy within has become real. It has become a board level topic and every company across industry is being impacted and, and they are being told. And the teams which manage cloud and data are being told, they should make sure that they have real clear visibility on what is sensitive, what is not, and make sure right people have access to right data only for their purpose. And, and they're being told it's mandates coming up, but it's really hard to do that. It's really hard because cloud is diverse. You, know, you are running multiple services, multiple ways of accessing data. The multiple control points and companies really struggle to meet those mandates, which ends up creating friction in their data democratization journey. And this is essentially where Privacera comes in is we are providing a unified a data access governance layer, which helps them A, get visibility on their data, but two, also manage rules and policies in one place, in unified place. And, and they can make sure that people have access to data only for the purpose they are supposed to, they are entitled to irrespective of where they are accessing the data. And they, we can provide them visibility on who's doing what at a very fine grain level. At the end of the day, we help these data teams meet those mandates of governance and privacy while enabling a true data democratization and an open access. And we are at that intersection and we continue to be in that work. Data security is not a very sexy conversation i have to to be frank but if anything it's been in the headlines more and more security we've got originally facebook and their issue and then t-mobile breach and the carnival cruise line there's all these headlines which you just stated that it's now elevated to the board level hey what are we doing with our data is it secure and now this 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 focus but help me let's let's take a step back for a moment and, and let's take take me back to where you started seeing this as a problem and before you you started privacera absolutely absolutely um so the the challenge of the trends i'm talking about has been going on for a while now and and data security is not a 2021 problem it has been there for a while um, um I'm trying to go back into a decade where we did our first startup called XA Secure and where- the 2013? Is it was right? 2012, 2013 timeframe um, where we started a company called XA Secure. At the time, um, the data was moving from traditional data warehouses to a platform called Hadoop and, and Big Data, which was essentially came out of Yahoo and, and was being adopted by enterprises. And there were companies built to provide these platforms to the modern enterprise. So the adoption was, was picking up because companies had data logged in, in in traditional silos. They wanted to open it up and they wanted to make it available to the entire organization. And, um, but the questions around, you know, in uh, when you're going into an enterprise, these questions existed. Hey, um, what is sensitive data? What is not? How do you make sure people have only access to the data they're supposed to? And, and, and those questions were raised up at that time as well, where 
uh, managing that and implementing those questions and answering those questions was really hard in Hadoop, which was not one monolithical software, which was a platform with a lot of open source tools put together, each having its own way of doing things. Mm. So what enterprise was struggling with implementing controls on who's doing what uh, was meant that they have to put these controls in multiple places and stitch it together, which was incredibly complex and manual. And we provided the industry first manual, industry first unified uh, layer for them to go and manage these rules in one place, and which was the foundation of our company, where we saw an opportunity of how we can make uh, the adoption of Hadoop faster and easier by providing this governance layer. And we were one of the first ones to come up with this part. So the company took off in the big data space as big data was getting ex um, was exploding in the enterprise world. Um, the adoption took off and we were eventually acquired by another big data platform company called Hortonworks. Gotcha. Um, and, and in like a year or two, fairly quick? Fairly quick, right? So we were acquired in 2014 and, and but we had, uh, we had a good traction, good customers, but and the notion was we were sitting on the outside. We wanted to see an opportunity of influencing and working with the open source community from inside, which was what Hortonworks mission was of bringing all of the team, which was working on the open source together. So we also saw an opportunity to work with these open source projects inside, inside an organization more cohesively and deliver a better experience to our customers, and which is ended up being that part. Do you so, like open source? Yeah, absolutely. And the open source, um, we're doing a segue here, but open source in, in my mind, unlocks a lot of value in, in for the enterprises. And it, it's, there's two folds of value. One is building a community, um, building a community across organizations brings in a lot of value add and a lot of different perspectives in, in building a project, in solving a common focus of solving a specific enterprise problem, right? And, and building a, the more broad-based a community, the more well-built those perspectives in. So you're, it's not just a single vendor thinking about it, you're, you're sharing perspectives and you know, are building those perspectives commonly. Mm. But it also builds interoperability and, uh, and, and tools which are built on and the similar open source platforms we can talk to each other, right? So, and, and that gives enterprises a way of not locking in and, and which used to be the traditional enterprise model of you, you, you sell something, you're locked in because you just cannot extract out or put something else in because you're not talking to each other. But building on open source, open standards, I think is the future for us as, as vendors so that we can give those options to, to enterprises. So I'm a big fan of open source. I'm a big fan of open source community and the open source standards. And that's what we liked about Hotworks was Hotworks mission was truly, truly open source yeah. and as part of it. And we wanted to be part of that. So you help be able to, when well, they, acquired XA Secure, yeah. your, your company that, that you co-founded, and you were then working within Hortonworks, and you're bringing that forth, and, and you're there for two years, like 2014 to 2016. Is it is it in Hortonworks that you start to ponder, say, mm, all right, it's time for me. I, I think I see another opportunity. Yeah, so the journey was, Horton, the XA Secure product became um, open source and known as now known as Apache Ranger. Uh, we also launched another open source project called Apache Atlas, which was really around metadata and classification that the analogy we had was you have a junk drawer, you can't find things. And when it comes to data, how do you organize things into a well-published, um, uh, well-organized drawer so that you can find your tools? And that used to be the challenge when people will just dump data in into big data. And, and how do you find? How do you find sales data? How do you find marketing data? If you don't label it, mm -hmm. if you don't organize it, it's hard to find. And so we were, Atlas was founded at that part. So, but we brought in the concept of labeling, identifying data and security. How do you then apply security to that label instead of um, mm -hmm. every piece of the infrastructure we can build at that point works. So we, the, we brought together Apache Ranger and Atlas together, the concept, which really took off. But companies will always come back and say, fantastic, you have solved the problem for Hortonworks platform, but I have Oracle, I have Teradata, I'm going into the cloud. I have data everywhere. Right? Can we apply these policies, these, these concepts across the board? Which triggered the notion of like what we are solving is not specific to a platform. 
what we are solving is truly for an enterprise customer. Data is everywhere, right? It's not, it's not in one platform. It's never will be in one platform. Um, it will be everywhere. It will be on-premise. It will be in the cloud. And today uh, it is in multi-cloud. So Private Server was built with that foundation of how do we take those principles we worked on in Hardworks? How do we break those principles of data, data classification, data security in terms of authorization? and apply it to a broader data universe and apply it, solve it for the entire enterprise, not just for a specific ecosystem. And which is the foundation of where privacy are built in. And we believe that privacy security is going to be a very critical part of the enterprise. And we're starting to see those trends in 2016. Um, and, but we wanted to do this for the entire data ecosystem. We wanted to do this for the entire landscape. And that was the genesis of privacy. If, if we take it just a second to curious for you as a founder, as a leader, um, taking a step, you start a, f a company and it gets acquired, it's exciting, you're inside, and then you step outside again. Um, are, are you like fearless? Are you like, I'm ready, they, they need this, uh, this is no problem? Or was what, what were you feeling at that moment? I think it was uh, as as founders we are we are excited about solving a problem, right? So, and we saw that opportunity in Access Secure to that this problem was beginning to get bigger. Right? These mandates um, that are coming into these data teams were getting bigger, um, and and the paradigm was shifting in terms of how companies were managing data. You just clearly saw it. It was just it just got you excited. That, that problem and in 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 the mind the problem gets stuck, right? So in mm -hmm. so the barriers to solve it that doesn't matter to you. Yes. Yeah. So um, yes, we we had a fantastic time at Hortonworks and Hortonworks was an amazing company. We went through an IPO and and we worked with some of the best minds in the valley and so I'm truly truly honored to be part of that and grateful to be part of that. But we believe that we, we were always stuck at how do we, we have not fully solved this problem yet. And it gets stuck in your mind saying, hey, hey, we got to take another shot at, at you know, doing it solving for a bigger enterprise because companies was always keep saying, hey, you know, we want this, we want that part of it. So as a founders, you're driven by a mission and you're driven by a, around solving problems. And the journey is hard, absolutely, yeah. and and that's the advice I, I always give to to anybody Jim parking is, is is just be thoughtful about that. This is a multi-year journey, but as long as you have a north star and as long as you have a mission in mind, um, you can rally people around in solving that, and uh, which is what we have done in Private Server. For your co-founders, uh, how many co-founders are there? So I have one co-founder, Don Bosco Durai, uh, and he and I started Access Secure and now Private Sarah as well. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited. Again, uh, I'm truly honored and privileged to be working with Bosco in, in that way of, and, and others in, in the team. Um, we carried forward very similar team that we had in Access Secure into Private Sarah as well. So again, truly privileged to work with extremely smart individuals who are solving these problems at a holistic scale. You see the problem, it doesn't leave your brain. You're like, okay, you leave Hortonworks, you begin at 2016, right. uh, around middle of 2016, you decide to launch this. What did that timeline look like? How many just walks us through that the first couple of years did you just spend on building it out? Yeah, and the first couple of years were really spent on talking to a lot of customers and building the first version of the product. And we wanted to take it slow and again, we were, um, you know, we, we understood the market a little bit, but things were changing at that time and things were changing where the cloud was just about very small in 2016, was starting to pick up. Um, there was this legislation called GDPR coming up uh, in, in Europe and, yeah. and, and it was not fairly clear on how these will shape enterprise strategies. Companies were very early in that part of it. And so there was these trends shaping up. So, and, and companies were changing and, and as well. So 2016, I would say up to 2018, 2019 was fairly built on building, working with our initial set of customers, but you also you, relationships uh, from Hortonworks and XA Secure. Correct. They knew you, you knew them and you're, you just go on to your next venture and they were already ready to jump in with you. Yeah, I think there, there were existing relationships. And again, deep customers, we were truly privileged to work with and build a relationship with, but we also want to take a time in testing out our, our thesis and hypothesis. And, and many times do that. 
we want to take our time. So we ended up talking to a, a lot of customers who we have never spoken before. Right. So, so and and my my theory has always been it's 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 good to talk to people who know you and they will they will say nice things to you, but you want to talk to people who have never known you and and who, who can be very objective in in saying no, right? Say because it doesn't matter. So unless you so it took few iterations to conversations to really hone in on what is truly a problem for them. Why are they doing certain things, right? So is, is it because they're being told to do that or is it because of that? So we, we formed our thesis, we crystallized our thesis based on those conversations. The overall notion of privacy did not change. Like are we, we are always on this mission of how do we help enterprises leverage data responsibly? But the nuances of that, where do we build it? You know, is it cloud? Is it not? Is it big data? Uh, what are the specifically what and what questions they are trying to answer? What is an immediate pain point versus a future pain point? Those come from I would say a lot of conversations in the initial few years. So, uh, and that's that's our approach of building a company is is you know building initially focusing on the initial part on conversations, right? So we thought without even going deep into the product, how you can do that part of it. So, and so we took it slow um, in, in the first few years part of it. Um, what I would say the shift for us has been twofold, right? Going back to the three trends I've talked about, um, the cloud adoption start really accelerating in, 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 the, in the enterprise segment that we were focused on around the 2018, 19 more, where the adoption just starting to go through the roof. And so the cloud was there, people were migrating, but around the, and I, I would say 2018, 19 mark is, is just starting to see this curve where, you know, every company we talk to is saying, hey, we have plans to migrate into the cloud versus, right? So it was 2016 still was like, hey, we, we, we'll, we'll wait and watch in, in some companies. So the cloud adoption was starting to pick up by, eight, by 2018, 19, GDPR, and, and there's a new legislation in US called California Privacy Law. So it's called CCPA, mm -hmm. starting to take effect, which, you know, for companies who are just based in US, GDPR was something very European, but California Privacy made it real because it addressed um, the rights for Californian customers. And every company in the US has Californian customers, right? So our residents of California. So Practically every every large corporation in in the U.S. start was being affected. So that started uh, accelerating those mandates coming in, where legal privacy teams started taking more uh, weight in the organization and saying, "Hey, wait a minute, we can't be wild wild west, and you know you have to make sure things have to be done in, in a certain way." And so, as a founder in a company, you you always timing is everything, right? So and 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 what we would see that 2018, 19 was the time when the trends we were intersecting on really started to accelerate. So companies wanted to use data. They were moving into the cloud. Privacy, governance, security is starting to become real. I mean, when I say real, it's not like it was not important before. It is real because it's becoming a board level topic and budget starts appearing around, hey, we got to be serious about that. There's a new legislation. Uh, the environment is, is getting not right around the time when, uh, you know, Capital One got hacked in 2019 is that's, that's another trigger. Right? You have this large financial company in the cloud, which got hacked. And so everybody who's in AWS is starting to think, hmm, can I be the, would I be the next one? So, um, these trends started accelerating in 2019 and we really started seeing a demand for that, right? So demand for the kind of work we were doing, which is really providing visibility on data at the deepest level, but also making sure, you know, people have access to the right data only for the, their purpose and nothing more. Those notions, those concepts started coming up more and more, uh, I would say in a 2018, 19 time frame. With the, uh, I think you said the CCPA started January 1st of 2020. Is that when uh, it went in? Yeah. And they were starting to discuss that, right? Yeah. So, in, 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 uh, and so, but All it's things converging. I, I appreciate that you're showing that. It's like so many things, you're in the right place at the right time in some ways. Exactly. And, and, and so, as startups, you, you have to, timing is market timing is, 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 is a lot contributing to that. You can build, 
a very great concept, but if you're early into the market, you may not make traction. If you're too late into the market, you 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 lose out on the momentum. So timing is everything. Balaji, you, you timed this perfectly, right? You, you had this exact in mind. You knew it all would happen, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I wish I could go and say, as I knew everything exactly. It just doesn't turn out. But hey, we have inklings of that. We, we were seeing that in 2016, right? So we saying, hey, you know, this is going to become more real. Because, and Again, in Hortonworks, we we had a driver's seat talking to largest of organizations and, and saying, hey, and everybody was saying the same thing, like data is going to be our asset. We are going to invest a lot on data, but hey, how do you put guardrails on it? And, and how do you think about it in, in a different way? Um, and the reason is that data security is not a, and you brought up the point, it's not a sexy term. It has existed for two decades and those principles have existed, but the concepts of data security was built for a very on-premise database world where you could you could just be an isolated database and an application and run with it. On an island, fun. you can be an island, and you you can lock this island and 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 be that. But where companies were trying to move that is they don't want to be an island, right? So this data needs to be shared and used, accessed by everything. So, and the, the way people used to do it before was I will make copies of these. I will make more islands. And, 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 and at some point, that's not scalable. Right? So you make an island for one team, an island for another team. You stay in these islands and don't cross. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that. Now, you have to now figure out a way you're building a city or a town and, and have everybody come in and, and coexist. Mm -hmm. So the, the shifts were happening even when we were working works is that people trying to like this traditional approaches of data. How do you govern and, and, and build that just doesn't work anymore. And it doesn't work in big data. It certainly doesn't work in cloud where you can, you can put the data in one place in one estate mm -hmm. and invite people in rather than creating and trying spending energy in islands. But what the challenge with the islands is a, you spend two years creating the island and by the time your business has changed. And so people, people are like, okay, I, this approach is no longer tenable. So governance security had to be thought through again, right? So like it, the traditional approaches were not working. So in we saw those trends in, in Hortonworks and that led to believe the privacy era, but uh, GDPR and California privacy uh, is something we're starting to see that it was great to see those being put in legislation, legislation, it, it, it becomes real and as part of it. It's in many ways, it's, it was kind of maybe a reactive thing. It's like, well, it's, it's sort of secure. Something happens, we'll fix it then. But all these major breaches are bringing up the, the consumer awareness. And then, and then when that happens, then government pays attention and everyone's talking about privacy. And then people are like, what are we doing? What are we doing? How, how do you see then, I mean, regulations, it can be difficult. They'll be hard. It's like uh, annoying, but you think they're 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 the, they're a good thing. I think regulations are needed, right? So, and and, and in my journey before uh, Privacera or Access Secure, I spent quite a bit of time in the retail industry and the retail technology and stores technology and other part of it. And we had a regulation in retail called PCI, uh, Payment Card Industry, um, and. It's essentially regulation around how do you store payment credit card information. And, and that stemmed from a breach that happened in um, a company called TJX in, in, uh, where hackers were able to get in and, and get access to a lot of credit card information and as part of it. And, and at that time, there was no regulation, there was no standard. And, and every every retailer was was doing their own thing. And some would do minimum, some would do a maximum part of it. So, and as an industry, you are as good as your weakest link. And, 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 and so hackers were able to find, um, you know, retailers who had minimum security and get able to access to credit card information and that's game over, right? So as part of it. So uh, you're dealing with thousands and thousands of credit cards. So this regulation was, was an industry led forum put in and the regulate the the reason the regulation I'm, I'm a fan is you need a both a carrot and a stick model and and the carrot model is standards regulations bring in a, a standard in terms of every retailer is now adopting that standard uh, of tokenization so how do you protect credit card data but you need a stick 
and companies will not move uh, in some cases if you don't have the stick, unfortunately, right? So um, while regulations can be, uh, you know, it's not like always a great thing and because some regulations are way so vague that it's hard to interpret what, what you do. I think PCI was one example, which was fairly clear. They went into a exact specification of how you should protect credit card data and what, what are the different aspects of it. And they, there is a regulatory body which is monitoring that. And there are fines if you don't offer it. But that becomes a driver for doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. That becomes a driver for, <clears throat> today, all retailers conform to that on day one. And, and you don't see the amount of credit card breaches that used to happen no longer happening as part of it. So the trends have gone down. You still see hackers are still getting smarter, right? It's, it's always a catch-up game. So it's one regulation is not going to solve everything and all security challenges. Uh, we still had retailers getting breached, so but regulation starts putting in hygiene and standards. So if, I do feel like we um, government has a role in building up, pushing standards in. Um, NIST has as a role in pushing standards in. And standards are important for everybody in the industry to get to a kind of common levels around uh, you know protecting data and now protecting privacy and individual rights. Do you see more regulations and standards coming in the near future? Yes. Um, I think what we are seeing in California is a precursor to every state adopting that. We see now almost six states adopting similar standards, and it's coming more. Um, and as consumers are getting more voice, we are seeing that in Latin America. We're seeing in Asia these regulations, GDPR kind of regulations coming up because uh, because con consumers are, are seeing that consumers are seeing how you know what happens if if data is not protected and, and if you lose with that part of it and they are reacting to that part of it and so individual rights is becoming is is becoming paramount so we see these regulations coming up in in every part of the organization so absolutely yes we will see these regulations having more teeth and so what usually ends up happening is initially the regulation is fairly high level. And as it goes and they start adding in more teeth. So we are starting to see that in GDPR and even in California privacy, the, the initial set of fines kind of trigger um, in the whole moment uh, of, of industry changing. And these are years worth of shift. So you're not talking an overnight shift here. These sometimes take years and maybe a decade, but in our, in our mind, we are not going to be go back into a world of no regulation, no part of it. We, it's, it's a one-way door. Yep. It's one-way door now. And so we are going to be in a world where, um, just like everything else, you need to have laws and regulations and standards. And, and data and you know, individual protection, privacy is now becoming real as part of it. So it's no longer a, some rule, some notion that is existing in the company. It is a fundamental part of your business now to, if you're handling consumer data, you better think about privacy on day one, right? So, and regulations are important, again, to unfortunately, you need a both a carrot and a stick model sometimes. To make that happen, yeah. I, you, you paint the, the future one-way door. I like that that visual. I feel like I'm leaving the airport. Once you're out that one next door, you can't go back, you're, you're done. Yeah. You're out. So it's like um, the TSA is not going away. We're not going back to those days where you can walk to the airplane, you know, mm -hmm. and every, attend that. And for, it's not happening. Oh. And, and, and in many ways, I think consumers are now more aware, as you stated, of this 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 movement and their expectations for privacy, for security of I'm giving you my data and they're going to be less forgiving if anything changes. Exactly. exactly. And it goes to trust and brand as well. And so what organizations are realizing is, is uh, trust is, is a paramount uh, and, and when it comes to privacy and what companies they trust to do business on. And, and we see that with Apple as a prime example of differentiating on privacy and saying, hey, we are different than the others because we are, we, and they run campaigns on privacy as part of it. So this can become, if what leading companies are doing is they are, they are using that as a differentiator and saying, hey, we, we take security, privacy, governance real, and we are custodians of the data. We have done investments on it. 
it becomes part of your differentiators. It becomes part of building a trust with, with, with consumers. And I think the next set of differentiating companies will come out of that, right? So it's it's about using that. And Apple is a prime example of how they are leveraging in, in their campaigns. It's, it's amazing. Balaji, you, I appreciate you kind of painting the picture for us of both, you've seen it coming, you knew it was coming, and a lot of people have been, but we are now here in that space where we're heading through that door, can't go back. And I think you guys are, are uniquely positioned to give a, a, a uh, an approach to solving this problem. For those that want to learn more, you can go over to privacera.com. That's P-R-I-V-A-C-E-R-A.com. Be able to request a demo. Thank you for your time, Balaji. It's good to have you on. Thank you so much for the time. And I enjoyed talking to you and hope to continue the conversations further. It's an exciting time, an exciting phase to be in. And I enjoy the conversation today. We'll see you all on the next episode of Uptech Report. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know.